All right, everybody, what is going on? I hope you're having a fantastic day out there today. During Monterey Car Week, I was able to finally go and see the Maserati MC20, the Ferrari 296 GTB, and the Lotus Amira. I know I've gotten a lot of flack from people on my last video for Comic Dale Myra, but guess what? I'm American, that's how it's spelled, that's how I pronounce it. Um, so, it's just what it is. I'll keep screwing that up until probably forever. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into today's video, which is my uh, thoughts after seeing each of these cars and which one I prefer to the others. So the reason I'm uh, lumping these three cars in together is because they're all mid-engine V6s. I mean, the Lotus does have the option for a four cylinder, but at the end of the day, it does have the V6 option as well. And of course, I know the Ferrari is a hybrid system, but we're gonna go ahead and compare all three of these, what my thoughts are uh, after being able to see them up close and personal. So we'll go ahead and start with the Lotus. We saw this at the Quail on Friday, and it's a cool looking car. Um, I'm definitely impressed with what Lotus was able to do. The car is definitely a, a cut above most other Lotus uh, models that they've put out in the past. And so I really commend them for putting this car out there. It looks really great. And uh, I was actually able to sit in it. And uh, once you get in it, check it out. Um, you can see it is definitely better than all the Lotuses before it. But at the same time, you can tell by the quality of the materials and the fit and finish. It, it, there is a reason it, it starts at $80,000. It's not a quarter of a million dollar supercar like the Maserati or the Ferrari is. But at the same time, it is still really nice. I mean, it's comfortable fits really well. Um, the one that they had there on display had the flappy paddles, did not have the uh, manual gearbox. But overall, I was really uh, impressed with how it looked in person because you know sometimes you see stuff online, see pictures and video, and then you see it in person and you get a completely different feel for it. Um, not the case with the Lotus. It is something I would consider owning. Actually, all three of these are something I would consider owning. They all looked really great in person. Um, of course, I can't compare the driving characteristics of these three because I didn't get to drive any of them. Just saw them all static. Uh, going from the Lotus to the Maserati, uh, both the Maserati and the Ferrari, uh, I was hoping to see on Saturday at the Concept Lawn because Sunday I'd originally planned on just getting up and heading home. Unfortunately, when they loaded in the Maserati on Saturday, they had it all covered up and you couldn't really see anything of the vehicle. And the 296, they had inside Costa Ferrari up on a stage and I couldn't get close enough to really judge um, how it actually looked in person. So Sunday I woke up and decided, you know what? I'm gonna kick myself if I don't go. So we went ahead and drove down to the Concept Lawn to check out the MC20 and the 296. So the MC20 they had on the concept lawn and it it looks amazing. I mean the car starts at I believe $211,000 is what they said um, talking to the Maserati rep and it it's an amazing car. Um, just the proportions, the lines, I mean everything is so clean and elegant on it. It looks really amazing. Um, the interior looks great. Unfortunately, because it was on the concept lawn and roped off, I wasn't able to sit in it. Uh, I am trying to get access to a Maserati press event later this year. Uh, if I can, I'll take you guys along with me and we'll try and get behind the wheel of the MC20. But based off of everything I've seen so far, the car, it, it looks absolutely incredible. I love the doors. I love the simplicity of the design and elegance of it. I mean, everything just works so well on this car. Then the last one, of course, is the most expensive one, which was the Ferrari 296. Um, two years ago when we went to uh, Casa Ferrari and the Concept Lawn on Saturday, we saw the SF90 up on the stage where they had the 296 this year. And then on Sunday, they moved the SF90 down onto the lawn next to the rest of the Ferrari lineup. So I figured they'd do the same thing this year with the 296. Unfortunately, I showed up and the 296 was nowhere to be found. And I was like, great. Where's the 296? So I checked the concept lawn. It wasn't over there. I went back, found the Ferrari wrap, and I was like, hey, where's the 296? I know it's not up on the stage anymore. They put one of the Monzas up there instead. And he jokingly said, well, here it is. And he pointed to the SF90. And I was like, nice try. That's the SF90. Now, where is the 296? And so he told me it was up the hill towards the middle of the Ferrari display, surrounded by a bunch of Monzas. So I walked up there, saw the car, and it really is a clean, elegant design, I and mean, it's something you'd expect from Ferrari. Um, it is a, a simpler design, of course, but I'm sure that's exactly what they were looking for, being the V6 hybrid model that it is. Um, 
It's not the super racy uh, F8 or SF90, and it's a nice, sleek, elegant little car, and it's something that you would add to your collection of variety of Ferraris. Uh, it's a great looking car. I'm really impressed with how it looks in person, uh, like the other two. It is a very clean car, and I was really impressed to see it there and how it looks. Um, of course, I couldn't even see the interior. They didn't op have the doors open like they did on the Maserati, so I couldn't get a feel for that. And of course, since it was rubbed off as well, I couldn't jump in the interior either to get a feel for it as well. Um, but overall, I really looks sharp. It looks just as good in person as it does in the pictures. Um, so. All three of them, none of them disappointed. They all looked as good or better than what they uh, you see in the pictures and the videos. Now, I would be happy to have any one of these three or all three in my garage if the fund permitted, but of course they don't. Um, if I were to have, if I, you made me pick just one of the three, I'd have to, based off what I know now, of course after driving them would be different, potentially different, but after looking at all three of them up close, spending a few minutes around each one of them, I think the Maserati wins. I mean, if I were gonna pick just one of those three to add to my collection, it would definitely be the Maserati. I mean, it, the car just is really incredible. The doors on the butterfly doors look really awesome. Of course, that's a nice touch that gives you some bonus points. Uh, and it's just a, a great design. Uh, my hat's off to Klaus and his team for what they did on that car. Uh, it just came together really nicely. So those are my next uh, thoughts on those three V6 cars and what they're doing for the market. Um, I hope you found this information useful as always. What are your thoughts on these three cars? Which one do you prefer? Uh, do you not like any of them? Uh, go ahead and put those in the comments section below because I read all of your comments and interested in what your thoughts are as well on these. And uh, if you want to be kept up to date with all my future uploads, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. So that way YouTube will keep you updated with all of my future uploads. And as always guys, I will see you the next video.